Put your hands together for Jesus. As we lift them up today. Come on. Hey. The song says there is no like our God. Sing the love. Oh, 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 Joy in my soul, turn my money in, turn my money to gladness. Now I sing a new song. Hey, all night long, all day long, I will, I will sing of your great love. No one else could have done all the things that you have done. So we say, everybody singing and shouting. Whoa! 
awesome God. Hey, he's a mighty God. He is the Lion of Judah. Come on, let's sing it together, church. Hey, put those hands together tonight. Oh, my God. 
can stop the Lord Almighty and everything that he's doing in our church and everything that he's doing in our city. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Oh, there's no devil in hell. There's no force that can stop the move of God in this church tonight. Oh, we serve an awesome God. He's gone before us. He's given us this city. Somebody praise him tonight. When the praises go up, his presence comes down. tonight we serve an awesome God he's unstoppable he's unshakable he is the great I am tonight oh and that's who we worship could you take just a few moments oh just to lift him up we praise you tonight
Amen. I am just very excited to be here. We're in such exciting times in our church. And, you know, just to have the privilege to just ask God, God, what is the word that you have for our church right now in this season? Because when I, when I come in this room, I feel like I'm not just in a room of believers. I'm in a room of disciples, men and women of God that are saying, we're ready. We're ready. We want to be discipled. I remember the first night I came and we were all just scurrying around and we had our books and I go, man, this is a different breed of people in this room. This is a different breed and and we're excited and, and we want to be trained. And we know that discipleship, it's intense and it's intentional. Amen. So tonight, I just want to thank my mom and dad, my spiritual parents. And yes, Pastor Al, I, I wanted to say that he met me when I was two years old. Because <laughs> I was two years old in the faith. And I was like all excited. And I went up to him at the mother church. And I just said, Pastor Al, I want to go there. I want to go where you guys are going, to that UTC. Amen. And I was like so excited. And he just was like, yeah, you go. You get there. And, and I got there. And, you know, Lord knew exactly what he needed to do in my heart, in my life. And went to the East Coast Training Center and was under my spiritual parents. And, and, and I, just, I just learned how to get a hold of God and a hold of this vision this great and awesome vision where you know then I come to San Diego to serve my leaders and I and I got to meet my wonderful husband and have my beautiful children and get my children dedicated here in the house of God and raise them in the house of God I said you know your VO when my kids have never been trick-or-treating <laughs> they've never been trick-or-treating they all they know is harvest festival and, and, and I'm, that's the truth. That is the truth. And so tonight, with, with thanks in my heart and a, a very grateful heart to share the word, we come, we come tonight. Amen? And if you have your hand out there, we're going to talk tonight about the characteristics of contagious faith. The characteristics of contagious faith. And tonight, I just wanted to start... By, by saying that, uh, a, a little story. And um, there was a, a new pastor, right? And he, he had gone and he was just so excited to, to start in his city. And, um, and he went to another pastor that had a huge church, a huge church in the area where he was starting the church. And, and you know, this pastor came and, and he was sharing how, you know, they did this awesome production a christmas production and how you know they had to ship in the camels and you know hire these actors and and then the congregants you know they just dedicated all this time 15 20 hours a week you know to to getting this production put on and um this young pastor was hearing it, and he, and he was excited to hear it, and he thought, yeah, that'd be cool. One day, you know, I could do something like that. But something was piercing his heart, and that thing in his heart was, I need to ask this pastor this question. Like, I, it just was bugging him. So he went to the pastor. He got a chance to approach the pastor, and he said, you know, it's just, I just got, have to ask you this question. And he said, if you had mobilized the people it's just a question just a question if you mobilize the people to intentionally give that 10 to 20 hours a week to meeting their neighbor having them over for dinner sharing sharing their faith sharing their testimony opening their home to a place where somebody hurting could, could find out that there's a loving God that can change and revolutionize their life. If, you know, they, they put that time and effort into that, would you get the same result? And that pastor stopped and he said, yeah. He goes, we would get the same result. He goes, but people don't want to do that. And when I was, you know, preparing and I thought, you know what? We're a people of Victory Outreach San Diego that we're willing to do that. We're, we are the people. We are the people 
that are willing to do that and will be willing to be trained for that. We're that people of faith, that we're ready to live out our faith. Live it out, live it out. And that type of faith is a contagious faith. You know, that type of faith, you know, it, it's something that people take notice of. When you, when you approach someone that lives next door to you or when you approach that, that mother or that coworker, or someone that you just, you see every day and you begin to approach them and, and it, it's intentional. Your, your approach is very intentional. And, and you begin to share with them, you know, come over, you know, you should come over, come over for dinner. I have a life group. I have a Bible study. My house is open. Come. It's a shocker. It's a shocker, you know, because they're not used to believers living out this faith. And we're a people, Victory Outreach San Diego, that we're living out this faith, a contagious faith. It's an intentional faith. In Hebrews 2 verse 3, it says, how shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard. And I don't know about you, but, and I believe I'm in a room of, of men and women that have been impacted by the Holy Spirit of God. That salvation came to our door. That we got saved and transformed and the Holy Spirit began to do a deep, deep work in our life because we want to let people know salvation is radical. Salvation is life altering. Salvation is mind blowing. Salvation is course changing. It'll change the course of your life. How many of your life, the course of your life was changed by salvation? I know the course of my life was changed. And, and, and that type of people, we're, we're doing this. And it's in James 1.25 and it says, But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they've heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. And how many of you know that this is the applicable, applicable scripture for family life flow? We're, we are the people of faith. Victory Outreach International. We are a people of faith. We live out of faith, a radical faith. And at, and at times, you know, our faith can, can begin to, to, to dwindle a bit. But, but we're a people that we know how to, how, we know how to ignite ourselves again. We know how to get a hold of God again. And we want to make sure that we remember that discipleship, it is intense. And it is intentional. And the study of God's word, like that scripture says, it provides that avenue. It provides that avenue for you and me to mature in the things of God to build that character. It provides that avenue to be encouraged by God and identity in Christ because we're that people. We're the people that we say, God, I'm given over to this law. I'm given over to your word. And then sometimes that word's gonna provide that correction, that correction that we need. I like when God corrects me it, it, it does something in my life that's powerful, you know. And we got to remember, though, that we came in a certain way. We came in a certain way, but the enemy wants us to keep us that way. He wants to keep us in the state of guilt, of shame, of condemnation, of unforgiveness, of toil, of, of confusion. He wants to keep us stuck. He wants to keep us stuck. But we're a, we're a people that we're getting free of being stuck. We're getting free by the power of God's word. There's a woman in the Bible, and she's referred to as the adulterous woman. And she's a woman that got caught in the act, the Bible says. And the Bible says that, 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 that the Pharisees brought her, and they brought her to God, a condemned, to Christ Jesus, a condemned woman. They brought her and they said, this woman was caught in the act. 
This woman deserves to be stoned. This woman deserves to be condemned. This woman deserves this punishment upon her life. And Jesus wrote in the sand, and many say that he wrote the sins of the Pharisees. Many say that he, he wrote, he wrote the, the sins of, of them. But they all began to walk away because they couldn't throw that stone at her. They couldn't. And that's how we got to be. We got to be people that understand that we're free from that condemnation. And then Jesus looked her in the eye and he had to say, look at me. Look at me. Who, who condemns you? And then nobody, nobody was there to condemn her. And he said, look at me again. Neither do I. I'm not a God of condemnation and that's not what I want you to live in. I don't want you to live in that condemnation. I want you to live a free woman. I want you to live a man and a woman of a contagious faith that we're getting a hold of the word of God and it's breaking shackles off of our life. It's breaking guilt off. It's breaking condemnation off. It's breaking sin off and vices off. And we hear, we hear those chains breaking. Salvation, it opened the door of our heart to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was able to come in, invade our lives. How many of us, we tried to live that same life? How many of us tried to live that same life? And the Holy Spirit convicted us and said, you don't belong here. This is not you anymore. You are a child of God and salvation has come on you and the Spirit of God has arrested you. And I've got a hold of you and you're going to live this thing out. And, and I, we just want to let everybody know we're just, we're just scratching the, service, the surface in Victory Outreach San Diego. And you know what? To encourage us even more, if our faith is getting criticized, if people are talking about your walk with God, if people are saying you are at that church way too much, if people are saying that is a cult, what are you doing? What is going on? I had a cousin that said when I went to the UTC and I was gone four and a half years, he says, are you a nun? Like what, what happened? You know, what is going on? Are you a nun? And then people are criticizing that we give our finances to the church. And I, I started giving my finances two months saved. Nobody had to tell me not to. I said, Jesus, this is the way and this is the way it's going to be. They want your money. They Oh, they just want your money. And they're talking about your faith. Well, then that's good because we're on the right track. We're on the right track of a contagious faith. We're on the right track because let me tell you, in 10 years, in 20 years, when their life is falling apart and their marriage is falling apart and their children are hurting and they're in the world and they're addicted, who are they going to call? They're going to call that man and that woman of contagious faith that have been serving God for 10 years, for 20 years, and we didn't, we didn't go backwards. We didn't go backwards. We kept going forward. And we continue to apply the, the principle of living a life of a contagious faith. If your faith is getting criticized, then you're on the right track. You're living out a contagious faith. And you know what? Another character, I didn't add this as a point, but contagious faith, it leaves no room for excuses. No room for excuses. We're following pastors. There was no room for excuse. Every trial, every tribulation, they still got to the house of God no matter what. They got on fire for God. They stayed lit for God. And now you see this anointing. What's happening in our hearts right now? It's because of the contagious faith that they lived out no matter what. No excuses. No excuses. Contagious faith, it speaks. It speaks. I'm breaking free. I'm breaking free of myself. I'm breaking free of my selfish nature. I'm breaking free of this, of this old man and this old woman. I'm breaking free of every insecurity. I'm breaking free of this shame. That contagious faith, it speaks. And it lives it out in us. Secondly, Contagious faith, 
It's unifying. And this is, this is something that our pastors have been speaking a lot about. Our mama just shared with us the other night. She united us and she shared this. And I just wanted to share it because right before we got together with her, I, I shared on unity. And unity, it begins and ends at the cross. Unity puts us at the feet of Jesus. James 1.26, those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongue deceive themselves. And their religion is worthless. And you know, and the, the reason I shared that, this is why I shared that, because God uses scriptures like that to make sure I don't get on a high horse, to make sure that I don't, I don't think I've arrived and I don't think I got a title the, the Lord God uses scriptures like this in my life to keep me off that high horse, to keep me arrogant. Because you know why? A people that are being judged, if we're judging people, if we're, if we're putting people down in our mind, and I'm not even talking about you're saying it with your words. I'm talking about we're doing it in our mind. You can't love that person. You can't love that person. The most powerful words in my life are when God puts me in my place at the feet of Jesus, broken again, in need of a savior, repentful and aware of the sin in my life. It's filthy, it's filthy. We went to the, uh, the bonfire, you know, and I've burned CDs, I've burned black books. I'm just playing, I'm just playing, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just joking, <laughs> right? What else do we burn? I don't know. Lots of stuff. Lots of stuff. And you know, and, and God says, what are you going to burn? What are you going to burn? And you know what? He said, burn that righteousness. Burn that righteousness because it's like filthy rags to me. It's like filthy rags. And there's something deep that starts happening when we just put ourselves at the feet of Jesus again. And we're broken again, and we're repentful again, and we're, we're in need of God again, just like the same day we first gave our life to him. Philippians 2, 3, it says, regard others more highly than you regard yourself. And we'll say, I'll say that again. We can't judge someone and look down at them and at the same time love them. Into the unity, into the unity of the spiritual family. You know what's happening too often? is unbelievers are walking in the church and they're trying it out. And they're seeing us in strife. And they're seeing us divided. And they're seeing us talking about each other. And they're seeing us lying on each other and cheating each other. And what's the difference? What's the difference? Humility, humility is what brings us to a place where we can work with people where we can unify the people, where we get together with the group of people and we're just so broken. I'm just a messed up sinner just like you. But God has kept me. The Holy Spirit has kept me. His grace, his grace has been enough for me, this wretched soul. And, and that, that spirit, people feel that spirit. People feel that love. People feel that anointing because you're so broken. You're so broken. Contagious faith says unity takes work. It takes work. Unity takes maturity. And unity takes dying to yourself. And I just wanted to share this, this story because I think it'll be impactful. And not too long ago, someone that I love, someone that I work with, side by side, worked with as a leader, you know, they came to me. And they told me something I didn't want to hear. I didn't want to hear it. They told me that under my leadership, they didn't feel encouraged. Okay? And I'm telling you this because of the point here. <laughs> All right? Now, I could have said, I don't need that person in my life. I'll take it for what it's worth and, you know, throw out the bad. The bad was everything she just said, so praise them. Come on, let's be real. Let's be real. Let's be real when someone tells you like it is. Let's be real. And that person told me in love and respect and 
But it still, it wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty. Okay? And I remember I, I, I went away and I said, I'm going to pray about this. I didn't say a word. I didn't say a word because, woo, I had to digest that one. Whoa, Lordy, Lord, Jesus. And you know what? I thanked that person about a week, a week or two later because, I mean, I really thanked that person because I told that person, you know, from you telling me that and me taking it the right way, taking it to God and to asking God to deal with me, because I did that, you know what, I got saved all over again. I feel, I feel like I got saved all over again. I feel like the power of God came upon my life and broke me all over again. I feel so on fire. I feel like loving people. I feel like pouring out my life. You know how intentional I am now about encouraging people? Oh. Get around me, you're gonna get some love. You are gonna get some love, let me tell you, because I don't ever wanna make anybody feel like that, ever again. But that immature man or woman of God, we could take it and we could leave it. The Bible says that, that we are to, or we're to build each other. We're to build each other. And a lot of us, we're built, we have the building tools, but we stopped building relationships. There's a bunch of broken, messed up relationships that we just left behind. We stopped unifying the church. We stopped unifying the church. We stopped bringing people together. We put people to the side. We shoved people to the side. Our peers, our leaders, disciples, all the way around. But you know what? John 13, 35 says, by this, everyone will know that you're my disciples if you love one another again. If you love, it doesn't say again, but we're, that's for us tonight. <laughs> you know, if we, if we begin to love each other again, if we begin to reconcile, this is a quote. It says, reconciliation takes priority over worship. Reconciliation takes priority and this is a word from God and I know this is and it's Psalms 133 too and it says it's like precious oil poured on the head running down on Aaron's beard down on the collar of his robe and God told me in my heart he said victory outreach San Diego there's an anointing coming on us VOSD and it's the unity anointing it's a unity anointing. It's an anointing that we say, I got to be mature about this. I got to keep building this relationship. I got to bring this person, no matter what, back into the flock of God. And that's the, the power of that love. That's the power that our mama was talking about. That love is a powerful force. And that's why it's a powerful force. Because there's an anointing that comes from it. A powerful anointing. Do we want to see chains broken off of people's lives? Then we're going to walk in that anointing. Thirdly, contagious faith is embracing. It's an embracing faith. Acceptance comes from change. Comes before change. Let me say that again. Acceptance comes before change. When, 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 my, my spiritual parents started working with me. I had a lot of changing to do, and I still continue to have, but I felt accepted. I felt like I, felt like I could tell them anything. I could tell them any struggle. I could, I could share with them, and they would still love me and accept me. And because of that acceptance into the family of God, because of that embrace, I was able to change we're reaching treasures. We were, you know, just in prayer. God, remind me, you're reaching treasures. Treasures out of where? Out of darkness. They're so stuck in a pit of darkness. They need to be drenched in the love of God. Soaked in the love of God. Sometimes we just don't have enough love to give. We get impatient with people. We give up on people too fast. We get caught up in our lives and we forget people. We forget people. But this is the other word that God has for us tonight as we come to a close. And that is 
that God is giving VOSD a longing heart. A longing heart. In Romans 1, 9 through 11, it says, For God, whom I serve in my spirit, in the preaching of the gospel of his son, is my witness as to how unceasingly I make mention of you. This was Paul talking about the church. Always in my prayers, making requests, if perhaps now, at last, by the will of God, I may succeed in coming to you. For I long to see you. I long to see you, that I may impart some spiritual gift to you. Supernatural love. This is a supernatural love. This is the heart that God is implanting in Victory Outreach San Diego. The heart that longs for people. It longs for people. It's a supernatural love, and it does. It feels like, it just feels like, I got to see that person. I got to get to that Bible, uh, Bible encounter, get to that Bible study, get to that life flow, because there's somebody there that I'm going to love on. And pouring out our lives begins to be contagious, begins to be something that overflows out of our life. We're not getting addicted to nothing else anymore other than pouring out the power of God upon people's lives. That's the only thing I want to be addicted to anymore. I want to be addicted to pouring love and encouragement on my family. Pouring out love and encouragement on my sister and co-labor to my right and to my left. Pouring out that love and encouragement to my pastors. Pouring it out to the flock and to the hurting and to the lost. It's, a, it's an anointing. It's an addiction. It's a supernatural love that's pouring out upon victory outreach San Diego. That's the word that God has given us tonight. Supernatural love is coming. Living that life poured out for God. And I don't feel... Sometimes, sometimes we feel we don't have more to give, but we are that church that we know our source is in Jesus Christ. When we're running out of patience, when we're running out of love for that loved one, for that husband, for that child, for that co-laborer, we draw from the source of love, the source of Jesus Christ, and we say, God, more love, more power for the people, God. I can do it. Through you, your spirit of your Holy Spirit can love through me. You, you, God, and we just leave us tonight with this quote. And it says, if people aren't on our heart, then they're on our nerves. They're on our nerves. And that is the truth. <laughs> the truth will set you free tonight. It is the truth. And I've been checking my heart. I've been checking my life. I've been checking the way I treat people. I've been checking the atmosphere in my home. Because if I'm not loving on my husband, if I'm not loving on my children, if I'm not loving on that one that's hurting and needs guidance and needs direction, when they come in the house of God and I don't forget about them, I call them, I text them, I get, it, I get a hold of God for them. If that's taking place, then, then they, are on, they are not on my nerves no more. They're on my heart. They're on my heart. And I'm believing God that the call of God will get answered upon their life. And I'm longing for them. And, and we're longing for them. We're longing for them. And we become addicted. There's nothing like pouring love on people. And tonight... That, that's what it is. That's the anointing. That's the word of God for us. And I know it. I know it. I know it. And tonight, I just wanted to end with this. On a few Sunday nights ago, I recorded the devil words. Did anybody do that? I'm like, dang, we're Christians. Nobody probably seen it in here. I know. It was on TV and it was real obscure. I just happened to <laughs> oh, record it. I never watched it before in my life. Anyways, okay. So I come home Sunday night, I get in my bed, I'm watching, and I saw our, one of our mama's favorites, uh, Anthony Brown, worth, you thought I was worth saving? Yes, okay. He won, he won for best gospel. And he went up there so grateful and thankful, and 
And he, he said something, and he wasn't the only one. Two people said this, and it caught my attention. And I said, God, that's, that's the heart we need. God, that's it. That's it, God. And two, two or three, no, two people for sure. They said, when they got up there, they said, two years ago, and both of them said two years. Two years ago, I said, Holy Spirit, take out of me anything that grieves you. Take out of me anything that grieves you. And then they said this. Two years later, we're at a place we never thought we would be. We're, we're in a situation here doing what we love to do for God and winning awards for it. Chris Tomlin got honored because he got honored as one of the top three that's ever got hits ever uh, with like Beyonce and somebody else. I mean, he, he got the most hits, the most buys, right? He was the only Christian artist that's reached that. And God showed me, Victory Outreach San Diego, if that's our prayer, if that's our prayer, Holy Spirit, take out of us whatever grieves you, Holy Spirit, whatever grieves you, whatever, whatever consumes my time that, that just, you don't want it to no more. You want me in, in Vethi. You want me in Bible school. You want me, you want me serving children's ministry, ushering. You want me in the new beginnings. You want me teaching fresh start. You want me in all these life flows. And I don't got time for nothing else, God. That in two years, we're going to be absolutely astonished and amazed of where God takes our church. You know, tonight was just, or this morning, I wasn't here, I was downstairs with the kids and I was watching Sammy and Daniela's post. That's beautiful, it's beautiful and I was just so broken because God was just showing me this, this is just a trickle of what's gonna happen in VOSD. This is just a trickle of how our church is gonna meet the need all around the world. And it's gonna meet the need in our city. And so tonight, there's a, a challenge for us. We have a challenge. And that challenge, this is a good one. The first one's a good one. Make a prayer list of all the people you want heavily on your heart and not on your nerves. <laughs> Amen. So first you're going to have to like be honest with God and say, man, that person's really on my nerves. Okay. So there you go. There's your top five. I love you guys. That's funny. Okay. Then Tuesday is we're going to commit. Basically, we're planning a morning or a night to get together with at least one person and partner in prayer. Because we've heard it. We're fighting for disciples, guys. We're fighting for the move of God. We're no, God's doing it. God's doing it. And, and we're just saying, yes, God, I'm going to be part of this. I'm going to be part of this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray in these, these souls, these leaders. I'm part of this. Wednesday, encourage at least three people. Through the week. Through the week. You can do it in one day if you want. But through the week, three people. Look them in the eye. Tell them something great about them. And I like this. We learned this in Bible Encounter. Dignify somebody. Dignify somebody with your time with looking them in the eye. And don't ask nobody how you're doing if you're not going to sit there and talk to them. <laughs> Amen. Just say hi. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> okay? Let's make that a habit. Okay. Thursday, make a coffee or lunch or dinner, whatever works for our schedule, with someone. Get to know their story. Where, where, how'd they get here? Where'd they come from? Where, where, you know, where's their family from? Do they have any family? There's a lot of fatherless there's a lot of motherless people i've met a lot of motherless women they need mothers friday invite a neighbor co-worker old friend or someone that used to come to church so any one of those not to church to life group to life group to life group because that's what it's all about right now the life flow. They're getting loved on. They're getting led. They're getting encouraged. They're getting hugged. They're getting fed. All that stuff before they even get here on Sunday morning or night or Wednesday. And with that, let's all stand tonight. I think tonight
tonight, again, again, so powerful, so powerful tonight. We're feeling so challenged. We, we feel challenged by the life that our pastors live and model, but we also feel challenged because they're a voice in our life, right? They're taking time. They're taking investment to invest into us. And tonight, tonight, if we just say God.